since tutorial 3.2, uh, we're still in maintaining and querying the database. And in 3.2, we will be looking at um, specifying exact match conditions in a, um, a query, uh, use a comparison operator. We'll look at using the and or logical operators, font size, changing row color. Uh, we'll create and format a calculated field. We'll perform calculations in a query using aggregate functions and record group calculations. And we'll also change the display of database objects in the navigation panel. <clears throat> so we are still, again, using the Chatham database uh, that we have used for the previous tutorials for 1 and 2 um, and for 3.1. So um, on page 142, it goes over the comparison operators, again, equals, not equal, um, less than, so you have those there. So we're going to look at specifying an exact match. So on the create ribbon, we're going to select the query design. <coughs> Excuse me. So from here, we're going to select the specific tables that we need. So we're going to select patient, and we're also going to select visit. Again, you have your one of any relationship. On page 143, we're going to add, so pull our information down so we can see all of our fields. We're going to select last name, first name, home, address, city, and email. And then from our visit table, we're going to select visit ID. We're going to select visit date and reason. Okay, so um, figure 317 shows the fields that we should have. So next, we're going to um, complete an exact match condition. So again, we have field, table, and you can see here where our tables actually change. We've already reviewed sort. The show, um, actually the checkbox indicates that it will show that information when you run your query. And now we're going to look at criteria. So over in city, we're going to type in Bloomfield. We're going to tap over. By default, it will put those quotes on there for you. We're going to select save in our quick um, access toolbar. And we're going to type in Bloomfield Patient. We're going to select OK. And we're going to select Run. So now you can see that based on this, it pulls your information in. And it has only those patients who are from Bloomfield. OK. So next we're going to look at modifying our query. So we want to remove the display of the CDC value. So we're going to go back into design view. Again, if you remember uh, from what we've talked about previously, the checkbox means that it will display it. So if we uncheck, it will remove that from the list. Okay? We also want to change how the, the actual order of our fields. So we're going to select the visit ID. So if you put your mouse over it and it turns your arrow down, at that point you can highlight it and then your arrow turns white and you can move it wherever you would like uh, for it to be displayed. So we can move visit ID over to our left. Now we're also going to select visit date and reason. So our arrow is pointing down, so right here. And then we're going to hold it until we select both fields. Again, when your arrow turns white, you can move it, and we're going to move it beside visit ID. So now you have visit ID, visit date, reason, last name, first name, phone, address, city, and email. From there, we're going to select run. And you can now see that we've changed the order, and we no longer have one field display. But it is part of the query because you can't um, complete your query without having that information in your design grid. All right, so we're going to select Save. Next, we're going to use Comparison Operator, so we're going to go back into Design View. And what we want to do, so sorry, we're going to go back in here, and we're going to close it. So we're going to make a copy of our Bloomfield Patients. So you're going to select it, right-click, and select Copy. Inside here, in your navigation pane, you're going to right-click and select Paste. 
and then we're going to change it to earlier visits. All right, we're going to select OK. So from here, we're going to double click. So at this point, these are exactly the same. So now we're going to modify earlier visits. This is in data sheet view. We're going to go into design view. And now we're going to set um, criteria for your visit date. So here. And if you remember, we have Bloomfield is here, but it's unchecked, so it's not displaying. Okay, so that's part of our criteria. So for visit date, we're going to type in less than one slash one slash one sixteen in tab. So when I type it in as it's displayed on page one forty seven, it automatically puts my date in time sign. Okay, that's important. You didn't have to create it that way, but once you put the date in, you put it in time sign. Okay, so it would know that it was a specific date. All right, and then we're going to tab over to city, and we're actually going to delete that actual field. Now, based on the way it's going here, it should be address, city, and email. So what we need to do is highlight and move it to the correct place. All right. And we also want the city to check, so we're going to check our box. We should not have no criteria here. All we're going to have is based on an earlier date. Okay? And then we're going to select them. Okay. So as we select our table selectors, you can now see it has different cities in here. Um, and it, it's all based on um, anything earlier than that specific date we put in. This was the 1 1 2016. So, any of our records that were prior to that date, they are displayed here. Alright, so we're going to save and close. Now we're going to look at defining multiple selection criteria. Um, basically, looking at logical operators. So, first we're going to look at the add logical operator. So we're going to select the create ribbon. We're going to select the query design. Okay. Again, from here, we're going to select the tables that we're going to use. And we're going to be patient. And we're going to use this. Now, from here, we're going to add the following from the patient. So we want to select first name, last name, first date. Um, and city. And then from the visit table, we are going to select visit date and reason. All right, now for the uh, birth date criteria, so if we go down here to birth date into criteria, we're going to put less than or equal to. 12 slash 7 slash 1966. We're going to tap over to reason. And for the reason, we want to type in influenza. Okay, so what this means, and this is an and, if you have two things in the criteria, so only on this specific row, this is an AND statement. An AND means that both have to be true in order for the information to display. AND indicates that both conditions have to be true. So the first date has to be less than or equal to 12-31-1956, and the reason for the visit has to be influenza for the records to show. Okay. So we're going to select one. And you can see from here that these were prior to the 1956 date and the reason was influenza. So we're going to save. I'm going to call, call this query older and flu. Okay. So I'm going to close the 
operator. Next, we're going to look at the OR logical operator. So, OR basically means as long as one of the two conditions is true, it will return the value. So, again, we're going to select um, our order. And for the patients, we're going to right click and copy. We're going to right click down in our navigation pane and we're going to select paste. And at this point, we're going to change it to older. And we're going to do it older. So work for the patients. Okay. We're going to open that up to make sure you open up the or. We're going to go back into design view. And here, what we're going to do is we're still looking at the same condition, but what we're doing is here, we're going to delete the visit from criteria, and we're going to put it in the or. So we're just moving it one row down. So again, well, we still have the same date as far as the birth date criteria. We have the same reason, but instead of leaving it on the same row, we're moving it into the OR. That means as long as one of the two conditions is true, it will return a result. Now, we're also going to, on the birth date, we're going to set a sort, and we're going to set it to descending. We're going to select run. So, we took the same one. All we did was move the second condition to the OR statement, um, and then also our sorting, um, and it brought back um, 38 records. All right. Just select Save. Now we're going to look at changing a data sheet appearance. So we're going to modify the font size. So again, we are still in older or flu patients. So in the text, so we're on the home ribbon. So we're going to look here under text formatting. All right, and we're going to change here our font size from 11 to 14. And you can see that it made our font bigger. So again, our um, Every sheet selector, select between any of the columns and double click and it will give us the appropriate spacing. Now we're going to look at changing the alternate row color in date sheet. So we're looking at a theme and a theme is a predefined set of formats including colors, fonts, and other effects that enhance an object's appearance or usability. So again, we're on the home ribbon under text and formatting and here um, is the alternate row color. So we're going to select the drop down arrow and then we are going to choose a specific theme. So we're going to select orange accent two. So here's our theme colors. So if we go down and it's going to be okay so yes eventually it will show up as far as our little um, alternate text. So we're going to select orange accent two lighter sixty percent. So if you just click over to the side, um, you can see that it is alternate rows in that specific color. We're going to select Save. So that's more to distinguish, distinguish between different rows, so um, it makes things kind of stand out. Um, typically, it's not a requirement, um, but it is something that is useful to help people to read information better when you can distinguish, distinguish between specific rows. Um, next, we're going to look at uh, creating a calculated field. And a calculated field is a field that displays the results of an expression. A calculated field that you create with an expression appears in a query data sheet or in a form or report. All right. So on page 157, we're going to look at using the expression builder. So we're going to close our form or to um, on the create ribbon, again, we're going to select the query design. We're going to select visit, and we're also going to select billing, and we're going to close. All right, we're going to add this um, from the 
visit table, we're going to select visit ID. We're going to select patient ID. We're going to select visit date. Okay, from our billing table, we're going to select invoice item, invoice paid, and invoice amount. All right, so in our invoice paid, which is here, so for the criteria, we're going to tap in those, because if you remember, this is the text box. Now, as you saw when I started typing, um, just like Excel, there's certain specific formulas that are available, so it's assuming that you're trying to um, use some specific functions. So if you use the escape key on your keyboard, that will go away. Or you can just press your um, space bar and it will take that away. All right, so in invoice paid, so show we're going to uncheck that box and then we're going to save. And this is going to be unpaid invoice late fee. And select OK, and then we're going to select run. So based on what we just did, um, these are all the amounts that are due, because these have not been paid. So now we're going to go back in and add a calculated fuel. So we're going to go back into the design view. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to click in the fuel next to the invoice amount, which is here. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on the builder. So again, I click here. Under design, um, under the contextual tab for query tools, here in the query setup, you find builder. So we're going to select builder. So builder is going to help us create that um, formula or calculation uh, for what we need for this specific field. All right, in the expressions category section, Right here, we're going to double click on the invoice amount and that adds it here to our expression. You can see if it added it here. In step four, after our expression, we're going to put in the asterisk, which is above the H. So if you hold down your shift and H key, and then we're going to put in point zero two. So basically, we're going to take the invoice amount and multiply it by 2%, okay? So we're going to select OK. So it adds that expression here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to remove, so right here, we're going to highlight that EXPR1, and we're going to replace that and type in late C. So basically all we're doing is the expression that was created, we're just naming that expression. So by default, it just gives it expression one, two, and so forth. But all we're doing, and it has to be for the um, colon, is to change that, um, basically the display name, so it shows late C. Okay? Now, what we're also going to do is look at the property sheet, so we can um, give it a display name. So again, while we're here, under the Query Tools for Design, there's a property sheet, and it will pull up a dialog over to our right. And under Caption, we're going to type in Link Space C. Okay? Now I'll show you what I did again. We created our expression. Again, we want our display name to have the appropriate spacing. So I selected um, the property sheet. And then here in caption, I type in late space C. Okay. And from here, we're going to run our query. And you can see um, that it's basically calculated what our late fee is going to be based on the amount that they owe. So again, it's 2% of whatever they owe. Now we're going to, uh, the, we're going to actually format our C. Um, so at the bottom of page 160, um, we're going to click on the light fee. 
So if we go back to our design view, we're going to select here, we're going to go into our property sheet. So from here, we're going to change our format to currency. Okay. And then we're going to select for our decimal places. We want two decimal places. Okay. And then we're going to select one. Now, so basically all we did was go into design view, make sure we were on the appropriate deal, select so our property sheet, and then we just changed the formatting. So basically we decided on what specific data type we wanted that deal to be and how many decimal places we just ran. And then so it formatted it based on the way our HTML was previously. We're going to save and we're going to close it. Next, we're going to look at using aggregate functions. So aggregate functions are your average, count, max, min, sum, those specific things. Uh, so we're going to uh, use, look at um, aggregate functions using the total row. So to display the total amount of all invoices in the billing table, all right, we're going to open billing. All right. So again, on our phone ribbon, here under records, there's total. So if we select total, and scroll down here. So what we can do is under invoice amount, so we're going to look right now, if we select this specific field because we've added this total here. Now we have an option to tell specifically what it is we want. Here we're going to select sum. So basically it gives us a sum of all the invoices. Again, I open up billing. Once I had our table open um, on the home ribbon, I selected the total icon. And then here I select from the drop down menu I want to sum. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to select the total, and we're going to remove that. Okay, so that's just showing you how you can see your total. Now, I'm going to look at creating queries with aggregate functions. So we're going to close our billing, and now we don't want to save. So next, we're going to um, create a query in design. So we're going to select Create. We're going to have Query Design. From here, we're going to select billing. We're going to call it. So all we need is billing. Okay, from this, what we're going to do is we're going to add invoice amount three times. So invoice amount. So I did add that three times. We're using the same field three different times. So we're going to look at, and again, aggregate functions will look at um, Average, minimum, maximum. So that's what we're going to be defining here. So on page uh, 164, you have figure 338, which should show you the same information um, that we have. All right. So what we're going to do here. Um, now, once we have our three listed, again, under our query tools, under design, or our contextual tab, we're going to select total. Total gives us a different group. So, you can see that it's added an additional field here, and it says group by. Okay? So, group by is going to give us the ability to find that average, minimum, and maximum. Okay? So, for the first um, total, we're going to type in and we're going to use minimum. So, under group by, for the first one, we're going to select min. Okay? So, here, what we're going to do is we're going to type in in your field name, minimum. 
cowboys. Great right, nice big colon. Okay? And again, you can double click between your columns so you can see all of these spacing. Okay, from here, make sure you're still selected on the first one. We have the total for the group we want now. For our property sheet here on the right, um, we're going to type in for our caption, and we're just going to type in minimum and we'll come out. So next, we're going to select the next invoice amount that we had added. The group by, we're going to set it to add, which is average. Here in our show name, we're going to type in average invoice amount, colon. All right. And then again, we're going to type in here on a caption on our property sheet. And if for some reason it's closed, um, again, it's here. So I want you to fill up the here. It shows it over here. Right. And then we're going to type in average invoice amount. Okay. Next, we're going to, for our group for our last invoice amount, we're going to select max. Again, we're going to go in for the invoice amount here, and we're going to type in maximum. And now, hold on. Make sure you don't have any spaces. And we're going to add our caption here as well. So maximum in the match. Okay. Again, you can put your uh, mouse in between to make sure you can read and make sure you don't have any typos here. Okay. From here, we're going to select run. And basically, you can see that it's taken the minimum, average, and maximum for your um, invoice amount. So it tells you what those minimum, maximum, and averages are. All right, we're going to select save, and we're going to call it invoice amount statistics. And click OK. Next, we're going to use. Uh, Using record group calculations. All right, so we're going to um, display the invoice amount statistics. So from here, we're going to select File, Save As, and select Save As Object. Okay, so make sure save as object. I'm going to select save as, and from here, we're going to type in invoice amount statistics in by section. Okay, I'm going to select OK. All right, so now we're going to Go into Design View, so we're going to click on the Show Table. So we need to add an additional table. So here, we're going to select Show Table, and we're going to add Visit. Okay? All right, now we're going to drag Walk-In down to our information here. So, you know, we can double-click, or you can actually select it and drag it to where you would uh, like for it to be. All right, and from there, we're going to select Run. And you can see um, our information based on walk-in or not walk-in. So it gives you the um, statistics for minimum, average, and max based on walk-ins and the information based on um, those who have appointments. Okay? And if we go back into design, because I think in figure um, 341, this is um, at the very beginning. So again, select it, and then move it to your left, run again. And so it is um, like our figure on 341. We're going to select save, and then we're going to close. 
Okay, we're also going to look at working with the navigation pane. So to group objects differently in the navigation pane, um, there's your um, all object access objects, there's your top down arrow, and you can kind of play with this to kind of see how you would like your information. Um, pages 168, 169 cover that in the um, textbook, so let's review that. 